All right. Are uh, we good to let these people in? Yep, we'll get started. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, I had two from the waiting room that I just added, so we should be good. Good afternoon, uh, my people on the phone and on Zoom. Uh, my name is Attorney Torsho Feaster. I am the Administrative Hearings Bureau Judge or Blight Court Judge. Present, we have via Zoom Ms. Alyssa Oliveris, the Administrative Hearings Office Clerk or Blight Court Clerk. And present in the courtroom, we have our Neighborhood Safety Officer, Mr. Carl Martin. This is the City of Glitz Administrative Hearings Bureau or Blight Court. Uh, our job is to resolve the cases we have on the docket for today. And the way we have been doing that is by having our NSO, Mr. Carl Martin, speak to any resident that has a concern prior to going on the record for their case. So let me ask the gentleman on the Moto G Fast, uh, which address property are you here for? 3237 Colorado Avenue. Okay. Uh, Mr. Martin, um, SO Martin, is that somebody you need to speak to in advance? Uh, yes, I can, I can, I can certainly do that. So. Okay, give me one second. Let me find out who the other person is. And there's a phone here, uh, 810-241-7152. Uh, which address are you here for, please? 3320 Lee Street. Okay. Uh, 3320 Lee Street, uh, NSO. Martin, is that, so is, is that Mr. Jeremy Mobley? Yes. Okay. Are those people you want to speak to prior to going on the record? Um, on their files? Um, you know, really on, on both these cases, uh, Your Honor, uh, I'm going to be recommending that we um, dismiss the, the, the fine. Okay. The reason being is both properties have made progress. Okay. Very Let, pleased. Let's go on the record okay. and then we can do it formally. Okay, very good. Okay, so uh, I'm going to I'm going to call the address at uh, 3320 Leith. Uh, I'm sorry, at 3237 Colorado first. Then I'm going to call the property on Leith and then we'll get you guys out of here, okay? So let me find the file. Okay, we are on the record in, in file 3237 Colorado. That's case number EN 2106054, alleged code violation of 39-7, just the duty of the property owner to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a James A. Cooper. Is that who's on the phone? Are you Mr. Cooper, sir? Uh, me. Okay, Mr. Cooper. I'm going to swear you in. I'm going to swear in NSO Martin, and then we're going to talk about your file, okay? Okay. Mr. Martin, you swear the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Mm -hmm. Mr. Cooper, do you swear to the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. My understanding from the file is that we were, I think we were here back on the 4th of this month, at which time we discussed this matter and we agreed to adjourn this case. And NSO Martin is the person who was handling this file. And I understand he's had a chance to do some review and he'll give us uh, the status of that review and any recommendations based on that review on the record. NSO Martin, what do you have to say about the property at 3237 Colorado? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to submit point of reference. These are the original pictures uh, in the span of time when we were visiting the property. Okay. And as you can, you can tell by the pictures that are submitted into evidence, uh, there's a substantial amount of trash and debris and items of questionable value um, uh, within the property. I see. And Mr. Cooper, I'm, I'm happy to report today, he had asked for some an extension and we had granted it last time we were all together here. And I'm happy to report that it has made substantial progress. Um, there's still a few things that I think he looks like he's working on trying to improve it even some more, which is my hope. But um, due to the 
review that we've conducted and looking at the property from where it was to where it is today, I uh, would like to recommend uh, to the court to um, dismiss these these fines because Mr. Cooper has improved the property tremendously. Thank you. Where we're at. Thank you, NSO Martin. Mr. Cooper, were you able to hear NSO Martin's statements? Uh, somewhat, not real clearly, but uh, I, I know he said that I made big improvements. Yes, yeah, yeah let me just uh, reiterate what he said. Uh, he provided us with photos from the previous court date from the original tickets uh, showing the condition the property was in and how bad uh, it was based on Mr. Uh, NSO Martin's assessment. He also has said that he's made a trip over to that home uh, prior to today's court date and that everything is looking much, much better, that there's been substantial progress. Uh, there's a few things le left to be removed, but he is satisfied with the progress that you've made. And based on that, he's recommending this mat matter be dismissed. Okay. Is that uh, acceptable to you? Yeah. I'm I would still like to continue to work with you guys on, on you know, I'm getting it cleaned up and stuff, you know. We appreciate that. I don't, I don't want no more you know, my neighbors to complain anymore and stuff and have have you guys down my, my case. Thank I'm you. trying to, you know, I'm trying to clean it up. I, I'm working on the backyard now so I can put all my plastic bins and stuff back there, you know, so my neighbors don't see them. Okay, and well, we greatly appreciate your willingness to work with this court and with NSO Martin. I'm sure he's willing to work, continue working with you. Uh, what you've done so far has been a, 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 a great, great job. And the, that is the purpose for this court system in general. So we're thankful for your cooperation. Right. And uh, NSO Martin will continue to work with you. But after the fine and tickets for today, I, will, I am dismissing those. So thank you, thank you very much. Your matter is dismissed right, and you are all done you. for today. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. You too now. All right, the next address we have to deal with is the address at 3320 Leaf, file number EN2006250, alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owner to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a Jeremy Mobley. It's my understanding Mr. Mobley is on the call via phone. Uh, I am looking at an order to adjourn this court date from uh, May 4th. We adjourn that to today's hearing. Uh, service is completely correct. Mr. Mobley is present. NSO Martin is present. My understanding is that from the previous hearing is that NSO Martin was going to work with Mr. Mobley. Mr. Mobley was supposed to make uh, changes and corrections to his properties to get it into compliance under uh, Ordinance 39-7. And we were going to review the status of that today. So at this time, I will ask NSO Martin, who is still under oath, uh, what the status of the property is and any recommendations that he might have. NSO Martin. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to uh, put, and then submit the original uh, photographs on this property when we uh, initially went out to uh, assess the property. But um, the good news is I've uh, been out there recently and I have uh, noted since the last time that we were together in this hearing um, in keeping the, the, the owner wanted to know something. left by the tenant and I'm happy to report today to the court that uh, that has been complied with there's been tremendous progress on this property as well um, he, uh, he's done a really good job in terms of getting the garbage up the left and he's done a really, really good job on garbage and based on the substantial progress and the hard work that he's put into the property I would like to recommend uh, to the court that we would um, dismiss the sign on this property because the owner has decided on the Thank you very much.
very much. And also, uh, Martin. Mr. Mobley, I'm gonna swear you in as well. Uh, do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Uh, did, were you able to hear the comments from N from NSO Martin? Um, yes, for the most part. Okay. Uh, just to reiterate, he said that uh, the property uh, at our previous court date, uh, that based on the ticket we had there, that it was uh, not in compliance with 39-7, that uh, he gave you an opportunity to, uh, to correct the issue and to bring it into compliance. He said that prior to today's court date, he's taken the time to go by that property and, and look at it and that he is very pleased with the progress, that you have made substantial improvements, and that you are uh, currently um, um, fixing the front yard and putting it back together, and that he is very happy with uh, all your progress, and that based on that progress, he's recommending a dismissal of the fines on today's ticket. Is that accept uh, acceptable to you? Yes. Okay, so based on the agreement of the parties, based on NSO Martin's recommendation, uh, I am dismissing your uh, file today. Uh, thank you very much for complying with uh, NSO Martin and uh, bringing the property into compliance. We appreciate what you have done. And like I said, that is the purpose for why we have this court and we appreciate you working with us. Thank you. Thank you, have a great rest of the day. You too. All right, we will go back to the top of the docket. We would have two more with NSL Martin, and we'll call those two properties from top to bottom of the docket. The first property we have is the property at 929 East uh, Gillespie, file number EN1701746, alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owner to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a Valerie Smith. Today is the day and time uh, for this hearing. Service in the file does appear to be completely correct. It is now approximately 1.48 p.m. This matter was set for 1.30 p.m. As a consequence of Ms. Smith's non-appearance, I am prepared to enter a default judgment in this file should the facts support such a finding. To that end, we have NSL Martin, who is still present and still under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has, if any, that will support a default judgment in this file. NSL Martin? Yes, I'd like to submit uh, those photographs into the record. Um, I do note that uh, this case goes back to uh, 2017, at the time it was uh, NSO Dawkins. Okay. Had a uh, wrote in the, this particular uh, citation, and again, it's uh, trash and debris and litter in the driveway and the property. I did go back, and we did find that we've had subsequent uh, NSO in the case of uh, this particular NSO. It was uh, NSO Manningham okay. had gone in, and those are the, uh, the most recent pictures that we have on the property. As you can see by the pictures. We still have the problem of trash and debris and litter on on the property, and it uh, does not show that it's made much improvement. It's an ongoing issue uh, to this day, and from my assessment, I do believe that it, it's warranted that the, the fine, uh, as old as it is, uh, the property. Thank you, uh, NSO Martin. I have received the uh, photographs provided. I will accept them and add them into evidence into the file. I do have uh, what's the nine pack on the first sheet uh, for the address that says 929. On one of the photos, there is a citation uh, taped to the structure under that address. There is another shot of trash and debris. There's another shot of a camper of some sort that looks to be inoperable. There's another photograph of two vehicles in the driveway that do appear to be inoperable. And one of them is crossing over the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, 
there is another photograph of what appears to be a barbecue grill, some trash receptacles, some wood, and some other items of questionable value. There's another photograph of what appears to be parts of a fence, a lot of wood stacked up, uh, just laying there uh, with buckets and trash and debris around it and landing on it. And then there are more photographs of the same. Uh, based on the, and these photographs were taken in the ordinary course of- Oh, right, in the ordinary course of, uh, of control and, yes. and complaint. Okay, based on that, and based on the testimony of NSO Martin and the photographs to support that testimony, I do find support for finding that there was a violation of 39-7 and that a default judgment is appropriate. The total amount I see due is $75. Uh, that's $75 to the city of Flint. There's a mandatory state cost of $10 for a grand total of $85. We will send notes to the appropriate parties and that will resolve that file for this afternoon. We will move down to the next address on the docket for NSO Martin, which is the address at 1730 Montana, file number EN 21060566. Alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a grain tree investor. It does appear from the file that a notice of hearing was sent out for today. That notice was sent for 1.30 p.m. It is now approximately 1.52 p.m. No one has contacted our offices. No one is present here in the courtroom. Service, like I said, is completely correct. As a consequence of their non-appearance, I am prepared to enter a default judgment in this file should the facts support such a finding. To that end, we do have uh, NSO Martin, who is still present, still under oath. I'll ask him what evidence he has, if any, that will support a default judgment in this file. And for the record, he is still under oath. Okay. So, Your Honor, on this particular property, um, this has been an ongoing issue. It's been going on for several years. Okay. Uh, the owner is actually an um, out-of-state owner, okay. but he has tenants there that have been there for uh, several years. They are repairing vehicles at this property, okay. and in that process, along with that, they're also scrapping metal. Um, they collect a lot of garbage. Uh, their backyard is, uh, it is completely um, uh, littered with debris. Of questionable value and there's a constant flow of cars going in and out of there okay we have ticketed the vehicles we have uh stickered the vehicles for for impounding uh the tenant knows to move them and then we have to start all over again from square one <laughs> so we haven't been as successful as getting as many of the vehicles although we have towed a couple okay. over the years but it is an ongoing uh, situation, so much so that the other neighbors in the uh, in the area are constantly complaining and calling us uh, about the situation over there on Montana. So based on the history and the ongoing problem and the fact that um, no improvements seem to be um, coming forth by the current tenants of the property, I strongly believe that uh, this fine merits uh, to be withheld um, and, and assessed to um, obviously the owner, but yes. the problem is the tenant. So Understood. Um, I think that's where we stand. Uh, two questions. Yes. This is a residential home, not a business. That is correct. Okay. Second question is, uh, were you have you been able to witness any of this uh, firsthand? I, I have. Okay. I've gone out. For, right. yeah, the, the, uh, this particular fine was written by my partner, okay. but we were called out there. And, okay. uh, yeah, we've gone out uh, as many as four and then so okay. at one time with the volume of vehicles and, and the problem and the situation. And uh, like I said, they, they have, for the most part, they ignore what we tell them. Fair and enough. And they continue going forward. Understood. Thank you so much. Uh, the Based on the testimony of NSO Martin, who's under oath, his firsthand observation, his description of the property, his description of his interactions with the tenants at the property, their lack of compliance, lack of appearance, and 
uh, lack of ability to put on, put on any defense today, I do find support for uh, a default judgment in this matter. The total amount that I see due is $100 to the city of Flint. There's a mandatory state cost of $10 for a grand total of $110. Um, we will enter a judgment in that amount, send the notice to the appropriate parties, and hopefully we'll get this matter resolved at some point, uh, given that it's been such a continual headache and has such a long history uh, for the city trying to deal with this situation. Uh, thank you, NSO Martin, for your time. I believe that's all we have for you today, but we appreciate it though. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have a great, great rest of the week. All right, thank you. You too. All right. Good thank you. Always, yeah. always good to see you. Yes, sir. All right, we are going to move down to the next matter on the docket, uh, to the next section, which is under collections. The first address under the collection section on the docket is the address at three one one seven Minomi, file number EN two zero zero four two five zero alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a Dressy Woodard. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment in this matter on, on, on May, May 4th of this year for $85 that was to be paid by yesterday's date, or they were to have appeared here today at 1.30 to explain why it's not been paid. Service in the file does appear to be completely correct. No one is present on the call. No one has contacted our offices. A late fee has previously been assessed. And as I said, this matter was set for 1.30 PM. It is now approximately 1.57. Based on their non-appearance and non-payment, I do find that this file should be referred to collections so the collection can determine how they want to proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. The next matter on the docket is the address at 131 Madison Avenue, file number EN2004252 alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is an A.J. Wilson. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment on this matter, in this matter back on the 4th of May of this year for $85. That was to be paid by yesterday's date or they were to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it has not been paid. There is no one present on the call. No one has contacted our offices on this file. Service appears to be completely incorrect. As a consequence of their non-payment, the fact that the late fees already been issued, the fact that they're not, not present, and the fact that it's now after 1.59 p.m., this matter was set for 1.30 p.m., uh, I do find this file should also be referred to collections so the collection can determine how they want to proceed forward with this matter. It is so referred. The next matter on the docket is the address at 5805 Fleming Road, Flint, Michigan, 48505. That is file number EN2003528. Alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operated there is Kara uh, McCover Coverly. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment in this file on or about the 4th of May of this year for $135. That was to be paid by yesterday's date or they were to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it has not been paid. 
there is no one present on the line, no one's contact our office on the file, service appears to be complete and correct. Payment does not appear to have been made. A late fee has already been assessed. And this matter was set for 1.30 p.m. It is now approximately 1, excuse me, 2.01 p.m. Based on their non-appearance, non-payment, uh, I do believe, I do find that this matter should be referred to collections so the collection can determine how they want to proceed forward with this file. It is so uh, referred. Okay. Moving down the moving down the docket, we'll call the next matter on the docket, which is the address at 1161 Forest Hill Avenue. Uh, that is file number EN2006401. Alleged code violation of 39-7, which is the duty of the property owners to keep the premises free from litter. The owner operator there is a SSA Gen LLC. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment in this matter on the 4th of May of this year for $285. That was to be paid by yesterday's date or the work to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it has not been paid. My understanding is there is no one on the Zoom call. No one has contacted our offices. service appears to be complete and correct. The late fee has already been assessed. And again, there's no one present on the call. As a consequence of their non-appearance and non-payment, I do find that this matter should also be referred to collections so that collections can determine how they want to proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. The next matter on the docket is the address at 1024 Pettibone, file number EN 1601906. Alleged code violation of 39-43, which is the accumulation of growth of weeds, grass, harmful vegetation deemed a nuisance. The owner operator there is a Patriarch Holdings LLC. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment in this matter on the 4th of May of this year for $60. That was to be paid by yesterday's date or they were to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it has not been paid. My understanding is there is no one on the line. No one has contacted our offices. Service appears to be completely correct. No payment has been made. A late fee has previously been added. And as I said, no one has appeared. Uh, this matter was set for 1.30 p.m. It is now after uh, 2.05 p.m. Based on those factors, I do find that this matter should be referred to collections so the collection can determine how they wanna proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. The next matter on the docket is the address at 903 Cottage Grove, 
file number in 1902100. Alleged code violation of 31-81, which is the city's blight catch-all violation. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment in this matter on the 4th of May of this year for $135. That was to be paid by yesterday's date or they were to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it has not been paid. My understanding is there is no one present on the Zoom call. There is no note indicating that anyone has contacted our officer on this file. Service appears to be complete and correct. There is no record that a payment has been made. A late fee has already been assessed. And again, uh, there is no one present on the call. This matter was set for 1.30 p.m. It is now after 2.07 p.m. Based on the totality of those factors, I do believe that this matter should be referred to collections so the collection can determine how they want to proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. The next matter on the docket is the address at 619 Alvord, Street, Alvord Avenue, Flint, Michigan, 48507. That is file number EN17036232. Alleged code violation of 39-43, which is the accumulation of growth of weeds, grass, harmful vegetation deemed a nuisance. The owner operator there is a Michael McCann. It does appear from the file that I signed a judgment on this matter on the 4th of May of this year for $185 that was to be paid by yesterday's date or they were to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it has not been paid. My understanding is there is no one present on the Zoom call. There are no notes indicating anyone has called. Service in the file does appear to be completely correct. There is no record that a payment has been made. A late fee has already been assessed. And again, for the record, no one is present on the call, no one contacted our offices. This matter was set for 1.30 p.m. It is now after 2.09 p.m. Based on those factors, I do find that this matter should also be referred to collections so the collection can determine how they want to proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. And the last matter that I believe we have on the docket for today is the address at 340 West Column Avenue, Flint, Michigan. Excuse me, 48503. That one is file number EN1804. Ms. Olivares, it says 1804701. It also says 1804765. Do you know which one is the correct? Yeah, um, it's 4701. Okay. So the file number again for the record is EN1804701. This one is alleged code violation of 31-81, which 
which again is the city's blight catch-all violation. The owner operator there is a Benjamin H. Jones. It does appear that I signed a judgment in this matter on or about the 4th of May of this year for $60 that was to have been paid by yesterday's date or they were to have appeared here today at 1.30 p.m. to explain why it has not been paid. My understanding is that there is nobody on the phone line or Zoom call. There's no note in the file indicating that anyone has contacted our offices on this file. Service appears to be complete and correct. There is no record that a payment has been made. A late fee of $25 has previously been assessed. And again, for the record, this matter was set for 1.30 p.m. It is currently 2.12 p.m. Based on their non-appearance and non-payment, I do find that this matter should be referred to collections so the collections can determine how they want to proceed forward with this file. It is so referred. I believe that that is the last matter on the docket and that that concludes our matter for today. Thank you, uh, Ms. Olivares. Uh, have a good rest of the day. We are off the record.